Nebraska. We are so glad you have joined us for worship on this snowy Sunday morning. As we celebrate the first Sunday in Lent, we will open with our first hymn, Lent by the Spirit. who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a, of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please pray, pray with me Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My, my God, God, I put my, my trust in, in you. Let, Let me not be humiliated nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, and the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me the way, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. You are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. On the first Sunday of Advent last year, as is church custom, we started a new church year. And with it, as we do every three years, our gospel readings began to focus on the Gospel of Mark. Now, one of the things about the Gospel of Mark is that the author didn't believe in using 10 sentences when only one will do. Our Gospel this morning, Mark uses only six sentences to cover John baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan, and the initial proclamation of his ministry. So that must surely mean that every single word Mark uses to tell the story has been chosen deliberately and with great care. When John baptizes Jesus, Mark tells us he saw the heavens torn apart And after the baptism, the Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days, and he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on Jesus. Now, we are more used to the story of Jesus in the wilderness that we hear in Matthew and Luke, where those authors spend whole chapters on describing the temptations Jesus whispered in Jesus' ear, temptations for power and glory, and I've certainly preached on those temptations on numerous occasions. But the thing that jumped out at me this time was the heavens being torn apart and the wild beasts and the angels. Because in the cosmology of Jesus' time, the heavens and the earth were considered to be very separate places. Perhaps if you are a lover of fancy poetic words, you may remember the word firmament from the opening of Genesis. Ancient Hebrew scripture considered there to be a fixed dome in the sky, the firmament, that separated the waters above from the waters below. In addition, it was always considered spiritually and physically dangerous when humans came into contact with divinity. Think of God telling Moses to take off his dirty shoes when he approached the burning bush, or God not letting Moses see God's face, but only God's backside. The temple in Jerusalem was laid out in such a way that you had to be more ritually pure the further in you went until only the appointed priest could enter the Holy of Holies. And yet, here, as Jesus is baptized, the heavens are torn apart. The divine realm connected to the messy realm of humanity. 
Now, as the Son of God begins his ministry, his first act is 40 days of prayer in the wilderness, echoing the 40 years the tribes of Israel spent between their exodus from slavery and their entry into the Promised Land at the Jordan River. Now, the Israelites did not spend those 40 years wandering, as we all like to joke, because Moses did not want to stop and ask for directions. God deliberately made the people of Israel wait until there was no one left who remembered life in Egypt, materially prosperous in some ways, but a culture of death that ground the Hebrew slaves into dust as they were overworked and had their families torn apart by cruel edicts from the Pharaoh. And then Mark tells us Jesus was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. The fruit of Jesus' 40 days is the reconciliation of humanity with animals and of divine things with human. In the very person of Jesus, the divided pieces of the world are reconciled to each other, Mark tells us. Heaven and earth, humanity and divinity, the lion and the lamb. A number of years ago, our presiding bishop began opening his sermons with, in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. <clears throat> it has caught on with many of us and in so many ways sums up our readings this morning. God makes a covenant with Noah and all humanity that no matter how frustrating we are, no matter the evil and injustice we perpetrate on each other, God will not destroy us. God sends God's beloved Son, pours holy divinity into imperfect humanity, uniting us all with God and with each other, liberating us from the power of separation and death. When I was a child, church was an extension of family. I grew up in a small nuclear family, and so church was an extension of our household. My mom was even the church organist. <clears throat> Our church family was definitely part of the extended village that helped raise me. Through them, I experienced a warm and loving God. In college, I was fortunate to find a congregation with an active campus ministry. It was an intellectually stimulating congregation engaging with new ideas, and we also had a lot of fun together. I tell you about the things that happen and the friendships made, which are still going strong, but frankly, what happened in Champaign-Urbana stays in Champaign-Urbana. <laughs> Through the ministry of that congregation, I experienced new ways of looking at the world and the deep friendships possible in a community of Christ-loving peers. When I was in graduate school, I found my way to a congregation with a priest with a deep interest in spirituality and engaging worship and who was also incredibly supportive of women in ordained ministry. Those years there gave me the courage to stop running away from this call to the priesthood, to trust that God would be with me even when my parents were very angry with me for following that call, and to navigate the strange and weird bits of the ordination process I found myself in. And in the past few years, as we as a nation have again wrestled with our past as a culture deeply intertwined with our history of slaveholding and violence, I've realized how much I yearn for the liberation God calls us to. As a child growing up on the north side of Chicago, I internalized that we didn't go to the south side because we were afraid, because the people there were not like us. How much did I miss? being afraid of neighborhoods that were primarily black. In college, as a student of archaeology, I spent my summers in western Kentucky, just outside of the town of Cairo, Illinois. And one of the first things I learned about Cairo was that it filled in its public pool rather than desegregated, depriving every child in that community of summers of joyous splashing in the cool waters of rebirth. How many relationships, how many dreams, how many ideas have been lost to the world because of the structures and prejudices 
that keep us apart from each other. How desperately at every age we need the reconciling, liberating, life-giving ministry of Jesus. The heavens have been torn apart. The reconciling ministry of Jesus invites you in. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent of those ideas and structures which keep us apart from each other, my friends, and believe and show forth in your lives the good news of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. Amen. We continue on page five in the middle of the page with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Scott, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church. We pray for St. Martha's. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for all those who've been affected by the weather and the sound. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we give thanks for all the gifts that we received during the week, for all those who sustain this congregation, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of, and thine, of thine own have we given, given thee. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We are so glad you have joined us today. It is Lent, and so this Wednesday at 6.30 on Zoom, we will begin our discussion of pilgrimage. Uh, there's a book that is available to you on Kindle, Are We There Yet?, which seems appropriate for the times we are living in as we all wait for life to return to something like normal. Uh, so Wednesday on Zoom, uh, we'll be uh, discussing pilgrimage and bring in ideas from the book, but you don't have to have read the book, just join us 6.30 on Zoom, and we will um, record that, so if you're not able to join us at that time, you can catch up with us. This week we'll be talking about biblical ideas and a little bit of the history of Christian pilgrimage. Um, our Lenten bags are also available that have some take-home coloring pages for all ages, and some other things for Lent. So um, did you know that pretzels are a Lenten thing? Uh, so you'll find out when you get your bath. Um, finally, um, I will be uploading a children's message. Today, um, our children's message is gonna be in two different videos, uh, one for um, kind of the idea, and the other one is gonna be the actual, a demonstration of the actual craft project that I'm inviting you all to, and you do not need to be a child to make this happen or watch the videos. And if you have not seen the news, uh, we are not going to have drive up Eucharist this morning in our surprise uh, two to three inches of snow that is happening around us. Grant almighty God that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Savior. Amen. We will sing the first three verses of 40 Days and 40 Nights. Bless the Lord. 